New Release 15 of FreeBSD, we downloaded the ISO from the official page. To install it step-by-step step and evaluate it, we looked for the installer version. This ISO image is not compatible with Ventoy, so we will use Bayon Etcher to write it to a universal serial bus drive and wait for the process to finish. We boot the computer from the USB drive and the installer will begin loading. Once it ends, a welcome message appears and we press Enter on Install. It will ask us to choose the keyboard layout. Then we type the hostname. And for installation, I select Packages Tech Preview so that I can use PKD normally. It then asks whether we want to download packages from the internet using network, so we choose that option and indicate which network adapter will be used. Next, in the Partitions menu we choose Auto UFS, select the target disk, then select to use the entire disk and choose the GPT partition table for the system. We confirm the disk again as the target and accept permanently erasing it. The system will automatically create the partitions and begin formatting the disk. The installation and configuration of the system then begins. FreeBSD is an operating system focused on features, performance, and long-term overall stability. It is based on the BSD system, the University of California Unix version. FreeBSD has in its repository the majority of Linux packages ready to be installed. After installing packages, it asks for the root password and its confirmation. Then it asks us to select the region so it can apply the correct system settings. We select the region and then the country, and it asks if we want to use standard time for the time zone. It shows the date and the current system time. Now it is time to choose the services, and I left Secure Shell Daemon and Dump Device selected. In the security options, I kept it unchanged and enabled firmware. We wait while the system configures the firmware, mainly for the Intel graphics processing unit. When it finishes, it asks if we want to add users to the system. We enter the username, the full name, we left the UID empty, the login group as well, then we added the wheel, video, network groups, but it didn't allow audio. We leave the login class empty, choose the default shell, keep the default home directory and permissions and set a non-empty password that will not be blocked. We finish configuring the system, and if we need to correct any information this is the moment. Otherwise we press finish, and then we proceed with the reboot. The system starts for the first time with a fast loading process. FreeBSD has no initial configuration, so it enters the shell directly and asks for authentication. We log in as root and execute the pkd update command, then we run pkd upgrade again, and afterward we install the sudo package so it can be used by our users. To grant our user administrator permissions we run the sudo and locate the line with wheel all. Then we remove the comment marker, save the changes, and exit safely. We install the XFCE and Zord packages to obtain a graphical interface. FreeBSD takes the source code from Linux packages and recompiles them natively for its use. It applies patches for BSD and compiles them so they can be released as PKD for FreeBSD. I selected XFCE because it is lightweight and reduces system load. We return to our user account to confirm that the Vesudo configuration works correctly and we install the Slim Login Manager because it is extremely light. Slim is commonly used with FreeBSD, although any other login manager can also be selected. We return to the root shell so we can continue the setup now. We enable Dbus, Held, and Slim so they start automatically. We also set the execution of XFCE in the Zinits file to ensure the desktop launches correctly. Before restarting the system, we test the graphical interface with Stardex, but an error appears. We read the logs and install the Intel Video Driver PKD. We try to load the graphical interface and another error appears. We inspect the logs and find that the monitor configuration is missing, so we edit it. Nano is not installed, so we proceed to install it. Then we try again and define a device with the identifier card 0 and the VESA driver for proper use. We try to load the graphical interface once more, and it finally works. XFCE opens correctly as the chosen desktop environment, so we shut down and restart. When the computer starts it enters the system and Slim runs. We type our credentials and XFCE loads automatically, giving access to the graphical desktop. We review the desktop, the panel, and the menu. It is well organized and includes the default applications that come with the chosen graphical environment. 
We open the terminal, enter the edit menu, then preferences and increase the font size to improve visibility and the window adjusts itself automatically. We then install FastFetch and SysBench to obtain system information and to evaluate the distribution. We also install Firefox to use it as the web browser. We run FastFetch, which provides information about the kernel, the desktop, the window manager, the initial memory usage, and the installation size on disk. We use commands to obtain the distribution name and the kernel version, and we compare those results with NeoFetch. Wallfree and DF are not available here. We use SysBench for the evaluation, beginning with the central processing unit, checking the performance of a single thread and then five threads with math tasks. We continue with thread and mutex tests to analyze concurrent load handling, locking behavior, and the efficiency of system resource management overall. We evaluate both memory reading and memory writing using a sequential benchmark to measure the system's ability to handle operations within the memory unit. We prepare the necessary files to evaluate disk input and output, and we run the test that determines the level of performance of the storage subsystem. We execute the top command to measure the memory consumed by Firefox with a single window open and no extensions enabled, observing the initial usage level. We open a second tab and load a video, then a third and finally a fourth one, and we watch how the memory consumption increases with each additional tab. We finish the review and evaluation of FreeBSD 15, and now we analyze the results that were observed and measured during all the tests performed. This is a comparison with Linux distributions running on the same computer. FreeBSD uses its own kernel 15, the newest version, and installs few packages. The initial memory usage is average. Regarding disk installation size, it is notably small. It supports the year 2038 issue and boots fast. The central processing unit tests required scaling because FreeBSD uses high resolution time, which produces average results except in concurrency, which is strong. In memory read and write operations the values were very poor, but the tab memory usage and the disk performance results were superior compared to Linux. In conclusion, FreeBSD has several highly notable evaluation points, but it also has others that are average compared to Linux, leaving the final choice to you. That's all for now, we'll continue with the tests. If you like the video, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications. See you next time.